Hi everyone! So, today I got another new kind of canvas. Well, it's the next second. And uh, I thought I would just uh, go for a flip cup um, on that and uh, see how it turns out. Uh, I have some more ideas for this shape, kind of shape of canvas, uh, but it's going to be. <laughs> take a while and I think I'm going to have to make preparation beforehand and everything so uh, for now it's just a flip cup. <laughs> uh, today I wanted to talk a bit about uh, paint densities and why they matter. Um, also consistency. When I do my flip cups I will put my paints in order to the densest to the lightest in density. The pigments in the paint, uh, you have to figure out what they're made of. Uh, very often on the bottles, you'll have um, letters and numbers like this one. This one is uh, PG7, PW6, PY3, PY97. So you take those letters and numbers, type them in Google, and write pigment after. And you will get to see what exact pigments are those, those are. Uh, I know this is um, uh, phthalo green, uh, I think it's a type of titanium white, and there's a Hansa yellow and another kind of yellow. And, uh, well, that's, yeah. The fluorescent pigments are tinted pigments. They are very light in density, um, close to water. Water um, is lighter in density than all pigments and paint. So that's why when I add water only to the colors and not to my white or not to my densest paint, um, it's to get the colors to have lighter density and help them sell up while I want my dense color to sink into them uh, and create the cells by doing so. Uh, by sinking into the light colors, they push them up and that's how cells are created, basically. The consistency also helps. Water will give them a lighter density, a uh, consistency. It will be um, a bit like a fruit cream. And well, this is more like a heavy cream. And uh, this one is a, a very particular. It's um, my stainless iron oxide. It's made of uh, iron, chromium, and nickel. Uh, the three of them have dense, are dense, but uh, not exactly the same densities. So when I pour this cup, I will have one pigment left in the bottom, and I'm not sure which one it is. I have to do more research on that. It's probably the chromium. And, uh, well, since it's three different pigments, when I swipe with it, I have some left on the surface and some that sinks and creates cells. So, uh, it's like that with other mixed pigments paint you're not too sure how it, they will react because uh, the different pigments in them have different densities. Uh, that's why I add water to them, so I try to lighter the, the density and consistency of the paint. Uh, I think that's about it. That's also why I do not use silicone or other additives. I prefer to experiment with the densities and consistencies of the paint. I love discovering new things about paint, uh, I love having fun in my experiments. They do not always turn out uh, the way I expect them, but uh, every time uh, I make a happy little accident, <laughs> as I call them, Bob Ross, we love him, um, I tend to learn something. So uh, I enjoy those accidents, to be honest. At first I'm like, oh no, but then I realize why it happened and um, how to fix that in a way. But that's about it. Uh, I think for today we'll uh, 
go to the painting. Well, I mixed my paint the usual way. Um, I used the Liquitex inks for the black and the Dioxazine purple. I do one part paint to ten part medium for those. The fluorescent green and fluorescent blue are heavy body acrylics. I do 50-50 paint medium and then I will add about 25% water. I add water to the inks for the reason I mentioned, um, but not a lot because the inks are very liquid already. So I had about 5% water and for the reason I mentioned again, my dense paint here, the stainless steel that I need to mix and remix because the pigments are so dense in it, they sink to the bottom of the pouring medium. My GAC 800. Yeah, that looks fine. So it's just 50-50 paint medium. Nothing too complicated. No water in this one. I want it to stay dense and have a heavier consistency, like heavy cream. Well, those are more like fruit cream or coffee creamer. So yeah. That's about it. I'll zoom you in and I will get started. Okay, so once again, I mixed too much paint for such a small canvas. But that's okay, because <laughs> I have all day to paint and you will get the videos throughout the week as I edit them. So, heaviest density. The stainless steel. I'll put all of it. I really like uh, this one. It, it has a really nice um, shiny touch to the paint. Next would be carbon black. Use carbon black because it has a lighter density than um, Mars black or Bone black or all the other black out there. Then it's going to be the dioxazine purple. Not going to use all of it. And a little bit of fluorescent blue, put it on the other side. I use the side of the cup so my colors do not mix too much uh, together. And my uh, fluorescent green. Well, that's a full cup. <laughs> Probably too much paint, but I will reuse uh, the drips and everything that falls over. I think it will mix nicely with the drips I already have. And we flip! And uh, let's lift this. Oh, that's going to be interesting to cover the corners. Um, corner catcher, please. Thank you. We already have some nice cells forming up in the green. Oh, 
that looks real nice. Give you a time lapse, see how it changes, and uh, we'll see uh, how it turns off. Okay, so time lapse is over. I'm going to uh, point out what I like uh, on the canvas so we can see it with me. Um, as you can see, those cells here, they do not have a distinct contour, and that's because they are caused by the uh, stainless steel. Uh, it's not the first time that happens uh, when I use the stainless steel, so I know that's what did it like here, 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 and uh, well, pretty much here. I love those lines, you know me, me and my lines, love them. Here, and a bit here. Um, also, I think I need to level up my table because uh, the paint went that way. Uh, or maybe my canvas wasn't level, I forgot to level it before I started, so, <laughs> oops. <laughs> here we'll, you will see uh, some cells in the fluorescent green and uh, that's probably because uh, the other colors mixed a bit with it and as they sank they uh, brought the fluorescent green with them and that's how you got cells from a light density paint reversed so I think well for me they are reversed <laughs> anyway uh, same thing with the blue here, same thing happened. Uh, I think the dioxazine purple has a very light density, probably similar um, to the fluorescent paint. So I haven't researched it yet, I just tried some experiments and uh, from uh, the painting I've used the dioxazine purple in. Uh, that's probably my conclusion and I will research it and we'll let you know in the next video uh, what I came up with because uh, I have leftover paint of uh, dioxazine purple so I'm going to use those and uh, before I do that I will research it so next video uh, I'll let you uh, know some news on the dioxazine purple <laughs> uh, I don't know if the camera picks it up it's really hard uh, for a camera to pick up a uh, metallic paint, uh, but you can see, well, I can see the uh, stainless steel mixed uh, with uh, pretty much everything and will leave a nice shiny coat uh, just about everywhere. Now, as it dries, it's going to be even more uh, dramatic, I think, uh, but really, it's lovely. Uh, I thought for sure I had too much black, but uh, carbon black. I like it. It uh, usually takes over. It did not this time. Um, not too sure why, but I have some black in my cells. And uh, quite like that. Reversed cells, I <laughs> like all the uh, name them. Some nice reaction happened here. Uh, the different consistencies probably played a major role in it. I have a bubble there, it's bugging me, I have to pop it. And we're back! So overall, very nice painting, really happy with it. Uh, the color pick was, I think, a great color pick. Uh, the black didn't take over too much, uh, I think I put just enough for what I wanted. and. Uh, uh, next time I'll uh, make sure my canvas is leveled. Oops. <laughs> but that's okay, it happens. Um, we all forget. Uh, also, corner catcher. Uh, really, uh, it's a necessity for this kind of canvas because the corners are always hard to cover. And this kind of canvas, well, it has uh, six corners <laughs> instead of four. So, really, 
really uh, useful. And it doesn't take much, as you can see, I've just used a cardboard piece that I folded and uh, I've been reusing it since. So, <laughs> um, yeah, on that note, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. Make sure to subscribe for more and I will see you in the next video. Bye!